the first dependency we add is the app Compit library. This will give use the typical UI widgets like activities, buttons, text views, etc. The next dependency is the constraint layout. This will give us a view group which allows us to position and size widgets in a flexible way. Then we have the card view. As the name suggests, this package will give us card views. Those beautiful cards you saw in the demo will come from here. In the demo we saw a list of folk tales. That list could be scrolled. Well we were using a recycler view. A kind of list view with superpowers. To use it however we have to add the recycler view dependency here. In the app, we have used a couple of material components. These include floating action button, material edit texts, coordinator layout etc. All these are packaged under the material library. One of the design patterns we aim to teach in this app is the MVVM, model view view model. Luckily for us, Android SDK makes it easy for us to create view models that respect the Android system lifecycle. That, however, is because of the standard classes which are contained in the Android lifecycle extensions library, which we've added as dependency in this project. The local database we will be using to create an offline first application is Room, an abstraction on top of SQLite database. Room has several modern features like the ability to validate our SQL statements at compile time. This highly reduces chances of errors and bugs. It's also much easier and promotes cleaner design, hence maintainability. We have to add the Room libraries as our dependencies for us to be able to use Room. One of the main things we aim to teach in this course is RxJava. RxJava allows us to utilize reactive programming model in our app. Reactive programming really plays well with a lot of app types we are used to making, for example, apps that need to communicate via HTTP to the server. However, to use RxJava, we have to add its libraries. It is a third-party library, remember? RxJava normally is for JVM, so to adapt it to Android, we also need Rx Android. We want to adapt it further for room usage, so we add the room adapter as well. The HTTP client we are using is Retrofit. As our HTTP client, Retrofit will be responsible for handling our HTTP requests. It's one of our most important libraries in this course, as without it we cannot talk to our server. Retrofit will work hand in hand with JSON, which will map our JSON data to our model classes. We are also connecting Retrofit to our XJava. In this app we are making heavy usages of dialogues. These dialogues are beautiful and easily customizable. There are a variety of dialogues we can use like input dialogues, progress dialogues, info dialogues, choice dialogues, etc. Rather than creating them manually, we will utilize a beautiful library that already has these ready-made dialogues. This library is called Lovely Dialogues. To reduce the quantity of boilerplate adapter code we write, we will use a tiny library known as Easy Adapter. This library utilizes data binding and saves us from creating adapter and view holder classes. Through this library, you can write a full adapter code in as little as three lines of code. If you happen to modify this or any other build.gradle file, then you have to synchronize it by clicking the sync button. In fact, Android Studio will prompt you to synchronize the file by showing a button labeled Sync. For Sync to succeed, sometimes you may need to be connected to Internet. So guys, that's it for this lesson. Let's move to our next lesson.